Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be super fun. As you can see, there's lots of goodies sitting out here, and that's because I'm gonna share with you my entire luxury handbag shopping journey over the past 20 years. Yes, so this story is gonna start around 2001 all the way up to now, which is 2022. I started when I was about 21 years old. I'm now 42 years old, so that is basically two decades worth of luxury handbag loving, and I thought this might be interesting and helpful for those of you who are also in different life stages. So I'm going to try my best to go in chronological order, starting with my very first designer handbag, the age when I bought it, and then the various life stages that I went through as I went through these purchases and which bags I purchased in which year and other kind of sprinklings of fun facts and personal stories as I go along. So hopefully this video will be interesting to you and I hope that you get to know me a bit better as well. So the very first designer handbag that I purchased was with my mom back in about 2001, maybe 2002-ish. It was right after I graduated university. And for some reason, my mom and I had this wacky idea that because I was now a young professional, that I should have a nice bag. Okay. So I think it was like a senior year maybe of my college uh, experience because I was getting ready to become a young professional and she wanted me to be prepared because I vaguely remember using this bag in college and all through my early working years. So let me show you. I have a photo of it. Here it is. This is the bag that I had for about 20 years and then I recently let it go in a vlog sale. So one of my subbies, Jackie, she purchased it from me. Um, this is basically like a GG canvas Boston bag type. And yeah, I used it for many years up front, probably when I was a young professional, maybe like the first five years I, I used this like every day for every occasion. And I loved it. And there's so much sentimental, uh, you know, memories attached to it. But because I wasn't reaching for it at all the last few years I did decide to let it go and I think it was the right decision because my subby said she wanted to gift it to her daughter which I thought was super sweet so yeah so this is the first bag and I think at the time when we purchased it it was like $800 or something like that and it was a lot of money for me and for my mom and I was like oh are you sure but yeah that's where it all started then literally that was like my one and only for years. So as a working professional in Manhattan, there was just so much temptation to shop, 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 but I really wanted to focus on building my career, securing my financials and starting my life, right? I wasn't married at the time yet, but I was dating my husband and I don't know, I just resisted. I resisted most of the temptations, not all, most. So that Gucci bag that I showed you was like my it bag for a while. Then in 2005, my husband and I got married and we were a proper married couple, both with incomes. We had a mortgage, we had, you know, responsibilities, but we were also putting our incomes together. And, you know, it was just that kind of like early uh, stage of establishing ourselves. And as I got more comfortable financially with my career, it was around like 2006, 2005, 2006, right after being newlyweds, that um, we started to venture out a little bit into the luxury handbags, or I should say we. I shouldn't say we, it should be me, but this one actually was a gift from my husband. We went shopping together and then he bought it for me. I don't know actually now, it's so fuzzy if we were married or engaged, but it still would have been around 2005, 2004-ish. Um, but this is a beautiful Prada uh, calfskin bag and it's also a bowler style. I guess that was what was in at the time. It's quite heavy, but I use this a lot for work and I needed a bigger bag back then because I carried more. So I still have this because it's the only designer handbag that he's ever got for me and it just holds a lot of meaning. Plus, it's beautiful. For many years, I worked one block from Fifth Avenue where all the gorgeous glitzy shops were. So during my lunch breaks, I would go to Gucci in particular because Gucci was my first love, right? And I eventually over the years started to buy Gucci bags. So here are just a few of the bags. I have a photo here because I wound up giving these to my mom and she still has them. And we took a picture. Anything I give her, it doesn't matter what it is. She's so sentimental. She refuses to let it go or sell it or get it, give it away or donate it. So she's just like hanging on to all of these, even though she's not using them anymore. But I would say these are all probably qualifying as vintage now. I also had another bag that had this horse bit detail. It I couldn't find the exact bag online, but it basically had this type of detail, except the leather trim was white and then it was canvas behind there. Um, when I see the horse bit bags coming up now, I feel super nostalgic and it brings back all these memories. But the bag I had that had the horse bit detail, I actually sold it. I think it was on eBay a number of years ago after using it and loving it for a while. 
Um, and I sold it for like 200 bucks. So isn't that crazy? This one also I used a lot for work uh, in the early years and I loved it. I mean, I really used these bags. And then I sold it again on eBay, I think, for like 150 bucks. So that's that. And then a little after being newlyweds and after being a young professional, my husband and I were shopping and we saw this cutie. This is the Chanel card holder. This is definitely now like near vintage quality. We were at Saks Fifth Avenue and I was like, oh, that's so cute. And he bought it for me. It was a gift and I just thought it was so sweet. So I still have it. I still use it. The vintage quality on Chanel is amazing as you can see how it's held up and I did not baby this thing but that really kind of sparked my love for Chanel. I'm not the kind of person that grew up loving Chanel when I was five years old. I had no idea what Chanel was. So this was like I'm a late bloomer I suppose. I was in my 20s and then I remember during my breaks instead of going to Gucci I would go to Saks Fifth Avenue and just roam around and I would look at all the Chanel bags and I would try on some of the bags in particular the jumbo and I thought one day but not now because I was really focused on just you know my financial security and like st establishing that and establishing myself in the world too and by then since we were married we also had a pretty hefty mortgage in Manhattan real estate is quite expensive so we were a little in over our heads it all worked out but it was really tight some months so there was no way I was gonna be splurging on a Chanel bag and then maybe just a year or two later, we started to feel a little bit more secure, started to pay down on our mortgage. And I don't know, I felt like hmm, maybe I'm ready. So I remember my colleague and I we went to Chanel and I wound up getting this bag. This one right here. I've talked about this bag before in the past. This was my very first Chanel. Uh, it's the Rodeo Drive Hobo bag. It was in this beautiful creamy ivory calfskin with gorgeous shiny gold hardware and don't ask me what possessed me to get this bag because it's so impractical and you know it proved to be true because I barely used it in like a decade I probably used it maybe two or three times maximum but I think I thought at that time I'm working I am being really responsible I'm going to treat myself and if I'm going to treat myself I want the most bougie most luxe looking bag ever so I picked this white one with this bright gold hardware and it just wasn't for me but if you're curious at the time I remember I paid like $1,800 for it roughly yes and then eventually because I wasn't using it after a decade I sold this to fashion file a couple years ago and they paid me about $700 for it so that was a loss and then we enter what I call like my hustling stage and maybe this could also be called like the boring stage as it relates to shopping because there wasn't much fun happening in terms of shopping. So after we got married, I was working full time and then I also decided to enroll in graduate school because my company sponsored me and paid the full tuition. The tuition was five figure dollar amount for each year and they covered it all, which was amazing. So I took that opportunity and I basically hustled. I worked like 50 hours a week and I did my classes in the evenings. And I didn't have time. I really didn't have time to look at luxury things and dream about buying things. And I was hustling. And I suppose that all panned out because in 2009, I was able to break six figures in terms of my salary. And that was something I was really working toward. But anyway, we really hustled. Um, but we also then prioritized like good experiences. Uh, we traveled a lot. We really prioritized travel, especially because we knew we wanted to have children at some point in the near future. And we wanted to get a lot of travel out of our system, just the two of us. So we went to Asia, we went to Europe, we went to South America, like we just did as much travel as we could. So I think most of our expenses, aside from paying mortgage and bills, went to travel and eating. So again, not a lot of room for luxury handbags. And it was after all that wonderful time that we started to feel like we were ready to become parents so in late 2009 i got pregnant with our daughter and then very soon after in 2011 i got pregnant with our son so we have two kids 20 months apart it was a whirlwind both in diapers both with bottles it was pretty insane i was still working full-time we ultimately hired a full-time nanny and a cleaning lady we needed the, the support there wasn't a lot of family support um, that we could rely on on a consistent basis because of their own you know life needs and their schedules so we needed steady help for sure and all of you parents out there will definitely be able to relate to this once I had my children I wasn't giving a hoot about any of this stuff I was using diaper bags backpacks and whatever cheap handbag I could find that you know they could spit up on and I wouldn't freak out you know I really didn't care it wasn't a priority I was also in a daze I was sleepy I was tired I was delirious I was happy I was so happy to be a mom with two babies but it was a lot to juggle 
I will say as my kids started to become a little bit older and were out of the baby phase and more into like the toddler phase, I relied heavily on Tory Burch. Yes, Tory Burch was my go-to brand for several years and I love them. I still think their quality is amazing. I think they're super underrated for what they offer. And then when I didn't need to carry so much as I got a little bit older, I started getting prettier Tory Burch bags and clutches and crossbody styles. And then when my son turned one, I decided to take a break. And this is for any of you out there who are like really career driven as I was, super ambitious, hustling, hustling. There may come a time in your life where it's totally worth it for you to pause and reprioritize. You know, so for me, I paused for a little while and I was a stay at home mom and I got to really soak in my kids before they got too old. So I really, really soaked them in. I wasn't making any income, but that was the compromise that I made. And to me, it didn't feel like a compromise. It was a hard decision. It was a super hard decision because I love my job and I was happy with my career and the track it was on. And to be frank, there were people in my life close individuals, family members, really close friends telling me that I was crazy to give up my job and that I was never going to get back on track and that I was wasting away my career and my education. And it was really disheartening, but I stuck to my guns because I just had this this feeling, you know, when you just have this feeling that this is right for you. And my husband was super supportive. And in fact, he was the one that was like nudging me to really take this time with our kids. So that was a break. And of course, I'm not making any money at that time. And we're building a nest egg for ourselves and for our kids. So I definitely wasn't thinking about luxury at that time either. So that stage that I just kind of laid out ran from 2007-ish to about 2017-ish. So that's like a decade where I took a pause. And I have mentioned this in other videos where I, I say I took a break for like 10 years. And I think some of you think that I started my luxury obsessions like today, like two days ago or two years ago. No, it actually started well before my YouTube channel. Um, and I took a break. And then around 2017, 2018 is when a few things happened. One. My youngest went off to kindergarten. So now I have both kids full time in school and I, it's like your life is just totally changed. Totally changed. So there's that. Um, I started working again, but it wasn't just working. After all the worries about you know losing track of my career and wasting my education and all my hard effort and blah, 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 all that talk that was the noise in my head, the job that I got was my dream job. I became the head of my function and I was reporting directly to the CEO. So I held that job for a few years, but getting that job was like the pinnacle. So there was nothing beyond that that I would want from a career standpoint. That is what I worked for. There was nothing above me uh, and that was it. So I, I was like, I need to recognize that this is it and not keep searching for more. So I held that job for a few years. And then also around 2017, 2018 is when I went to Paris. I hadn't gone to Paris for a few years, actually. And my friends and I decided to go and I fell in love with Celine. So while in Paris, I bought this Celine trio bag, which I think is one of the most classic minimalist chic bags out there and that just like kicked off all those things that I just mentioned my son going to school um, my career like just jumping into overdrive and my Paris trip where I picked up Celine that kind of just like kick-started this whole luxury handbag uh, you know love and enthusiasm all over again so I kind of like woke up from my 10-year uh, hiatus also on that Paris trip is when I fell in love with Hermes. I really didn't know Hermes that much at all until that trip. And I learned so much about the brand. And I also got this Kelly dog bracelet, which I love. Um, I think my friends bought scarves and maybe a bag or two at the time. But yeah, this is how it all started. You can see now, right? So now starting 2018, I'm going to call it like my... Uh, life is fun phase or let's enjoy the fruits of our labor phase okay so this is where it kicks off then after my Paris trip I quickly pick up this cutie the YSL toy Lulu which I still adore and I was like okay this is this is really cool this is fun I'm kind of enjoying myself so I had these two the Celine and the YSL and then it's kind of a slippery slope as we all know here since we're all handbag lovers. In 2019, I picked up five luxury handbags, which I will show you which ones they are in a particular order. And I also kicked off my YouTube channel. 
So the first bag that I purchased in 2019 was this Chanel Walk. Yes, I went back to Chanel. I was like, I need to revisit Chanel. So I got this. I love it. And then the second bag that I got was this beautiful caramel Givenchy Antigona Mini. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, color, and I love this size. So that was the second one. Then this is where my love for Louis Vuitton kicked off. Yeah, I'm a late bloomer, I tell you. A lot of my friends had Louis Vuitton bags when we were in our 20s, and I didn't have an eye for them until... I set my eyes on this particular bag, the Pochette Matisse, and I was like, oh my gosh, that bag is so pretty. I love the silhouette. I just love the design of it. I love the versatility of it. And I was like, I need to get that bag. But of course, when I wanted the bag, there were all these quality issues with the glazing. They were um, doing like recalls. You know, they were taking back the bags and repairing them. And uh, they had paused production, so there weren't many at the boutiques. And I waited a full on year to get the bag. So... At some point, it became available, and I got this, and that is really what kicked off my LV uh, journey. And then you guys know, if you're a regular here and you've watched my Chanel videos, I went to the boutique and I purchased the classic flap in caviar multiple times, and I had to return them because they each had quality issues and defects, and I was not pleased. So at the end of it, I actually wound up going vintage, and I got this from Fashion File black lambskin, silver hardware. It's got the flat CC, which I think is extra special. It's buttery soft. I love that it has a silver hardware because I know a lot of the vintage classic flaps have the gold hardware. And this was my first lambskin bag, so special in many ways. And then finally, the last bag that I got in 2019 was this Celine Classic Box bag in the medium. And I just thought, wow, Phoebe Philo does it best. You know, I was disappointed because after my Paris trip where I picked up the Celine Trio, I learned very soon after that she was leaving the brand. And I was like, oh, no, I really like her style. And uh, so I actually had to go pre-loved. And I got this as well from Fashion File. And yeah, so this is beautiful. By the way, I mentioned this a while ago. Phoebe Philo is going to debut her own namesake collection supposed to be this year and it's backed by LVMH so I am like holding out to see what she does okay so I just want to pause here and clarify something I do think that being on social media um, absorbing YouTube videos putting out YouTube videos has influenced me to a certain extent and perhaps I may have made more impulse purchases throughout than I would have if I didn't have a YouTube channel but I just want to be very clear that my luxury handbag uh, obsession did not start with YouTube. So I don't want to blame YouTube. I don't want that to be my excuse. And I also don't want anyone to misunderstand that like I buy these things to feed my channel. I was already buying these things. I took a break and then I started buying these things and then I started my YouTube channel. So I hope that's clear. Okay, and then we get into the year 2020. And again, I think I purchased like five major items, but then I also went into the land of SLGs and went a little nuts, especially Louis Vuitton SLGs. I just fell in love with the durability of the canvas materials. So here's what I picked up. This one here, which I basically waited almost 15 years or so to get after first trying it on at Saks Fifth Avenue. I got this pre-loved, amazing price. This one also has the flat CC hardware, which I love. Black caviar. Yeah, it's just gorgeous. This one as well, I got into Hermes again, and this time it was my... Uh, and this time it was a handbag, not bracelets. Uh, yeah, I wanted the mini Eveline. Actually, this is the first and only bag that I was really interested in from the Hermes handbag lineup. I know everyone at the time was going gaga for Birkins and Kellys, but I only had my eyes on this little cutie because of the wearability of it with the very comfortable strap, crossbody. And I love this color, so this is exactly what I wanted, and this is what I had requested. And this is what I mean about SLGs, even from Chanel. Like I picked up this houndstooth tweed uh, large size O case that I use as a clutch. I picked up this one here. I consider this a bag, but I know technically it's an SLG. This is the filigree wallet on chain. And then we get to LV. And I just kind of 
fell for everything <laughs> i mean within reason so the toiletry 26 i know it's really hard to get now the cosmetic pm size the mini pochette i also have the key pouch and dami a bin i use all of these all the time Okay, then we jump into 2021. See, we're going all the way through the phases. And 2021, you know, last year, um, it was kind of a crazy, wacky year for everybody with all that was going on in the world. Um, for the most part, my life was pretty much the same. My kids were going to school. We were traveling, not internationally, but we still traveled a lot domestically. We were trying to enjoy as much as we could. Um, and then there was the shopping as well. And I think my shopping was a little out of hand, which I referred to in my recent videos, just trying to find more balance. But here's what I picked up from the handbag category in 2021. This one here was the very first purchase that I made in 2021. Technically, I put it uh, on pre-order with Chanel in 2020. And then I waited and it was ready in 2021. So yeah, this cutie here from the 21P collection, mini rectangle. And then this one was the next one. You guys know that I always wanted a mini square from Chanel, so I was happy to pick this up again from the 21P collection. Really pretty iridescent gold with the light champagne gold hardware. Then all the way back there, I picked up my Louis Vuitton Speedy Bandolier in the 35 size, which I use for travel. And then I went back to Chanel and I picked up this Beige Claire and it's this beautiful caviar with the bright gold hardware. I really didn't think I was gonna like this, but I really love the pink undertones on this one specifically. And I also didn't think I would ever buy a classic flat from the boutique again after having those negative experiences uh, a couple years before. But this one just looked perfect to me. And also by now I have an essay that I really adore and she just makes it really easy to buy from her. So yeah, I picked this one up. That was last year. And then this one is my one and only Dior bag. It's the Lady Dior in the small size in the blush color with the matte lambskin and the champagne gold hardware. Um, I had actually been eyeing the, Dior, the Lady Dior for a number of years and just kind of hesitated and changed my mind a lot until last year. So I think it's a beautiful classic. I did do a video on this talking about how I have a love-hate relationship with this bag. It's kind of a unique relationship. I don't feel this way about any other bag in my collection, but there are some annoying qualities about this bag. Uh, fortunately, it's beautiful, so I can sort of overlook some of those annoying aspects, but if you're interested, you can go check out that video. I think I actually messed up the order, the chronological order for 2021, but I also picked up the Hermes Birkin 30 in the gold togo with the palladium hardware. That was around summertime. Uh, it was around my birthday. So I think, yeah, I, I screwed up the order a little bit, but you get the idea. This was the group that I picked up in 2021. So for 2022, I'm really thinking I'm going to just enjoy everything that I have accumulated up until this point. I feel very comfortable with what I own. I feel no guilt. I feel no pressure to let them go. I don't feel bad about it. Um, but if I keep going, then I will start to feel like I'm overindulging and just becoming overly materialistic because I there are other things I want to put my attention into. So I'm at a point now where I can afford more, but that doesn't mean I want more. And I'm sure a lot of you are in the same position. So I'm going to enjoy, be grateful for what I have, and then I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for Phoebe Philo's collection, like I mentioned. I'm curious what she puts out. I might be tempted if, you know, there's some goodies available this year. And I also want to practice just admiring more from afar. You know, I used to be really good at that. I would see beautiful, beautiful things, bags, jewelry, outfits on Pinterest, on Instagram, on people on the street. I live in Manhattan, so I see gorgeous people in different neighborhoods. And I would just admire and be like, wow, that's so just aesthetically pleasing. And I want to get back to that and not feel like I need to buy and not feel like I need to own the thing that is so pretty, but I can just admire it. So that's definitely one of the, the other things I'll be focusing on this year. I also want to explore lesser known brands, up and coming brands. I'm really starting to explore uh, French designer brands that like nobody knows about, it seems like. As you can see, the vast majority of my handbags are from French designers. That's just kind of what I love. So I really want to just learn and research more about up and coming French designers too that don't have big glitzy names and huge marketing budgets and really crazy prices. 
I'm also going to be looking at New York based brands because you guys know I love to support New York brands as a New Yorker. And basically at the end of the day, the name of the game is balance, just to feel balanced, to feel like I'm allocating both my time, energy, and my money to a balanced array of different areas and so that I feel healthy. That's what I wanna feel. I don't want to just go down the slippery slope and feel like I've lost control of myself. And you know, that's not a good feeling at the end of the day for anybody, right? Okay, so I'll close there. I hope this video was fun, interesting, and helpful for some of you. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.